SBR videos are sponsored by Sports Cash System. Click on the link below for more information. SBR Forum videos, I'm Peter Loshak. The NFL regular season is just about to start. The preseason just ended, so we are gathering a bunch of last minute thoughts here from uh, some professional handicappers. Uh, just a little bit of last extra info to uh, head into the season with. And right now we're going to talk with Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com, an industry veteran and a survivor. He's been around forever for 30 years, and we're going to talk to him about early season uh, betting strategies in the first few weeks in the NFL. Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Peter. I'm fired up for the NFL season. Closed out the preseason 4-0. Not the greatest run ever, but it's the start of something big. Hey, 4-0, man. We'll take it. And uh, we're going to talk to you about early season betting strategies, and you're probably the perfect person to discuss this with because you've been around since the late 80s. So you're heading mm -hmm. into what, your 25th, 30th season of uh, handicapping the NFL? Well, I think it's my 26 year as a professional public handicapper, but I've been betting and handicapping long before that, and it really started as a hobby as a kid, but that's another story for another time. Absolutely. All right. Well, he's a survivor. I call him the OC original Kappa. And uh, what can you tell us in general about uh, how you're thinking, some things you look for uh, over the years in the uh, first few weeks of the NFL season? Well, there are quite a few things. I, we may have talked about this on one of the videos we did earlier between my own internal stuff that I do and talking to you. I can't remember <laughs> what I said where, but it bears repeating, even if we did talk about it on one of our earlier videos. I love fading quarterbacks that didn't have any track record heading into last season that are coming off of great years because they've got the burden of high expectations. It doesn't always have to be a rookie quarterback. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a first-year quarterback, but a couple of the guys I'm talking about this year certainly are. Robert Griffin the third. Now, obviously, with the whole injury situation, there's a lot more factors to consider there. Uh, Andrew Luck, I know he was everybody's can't-miss prospect. He was supposed to be the prototypical quarterback, and he did everything right last year. But again, he's got much higher expectations this year. Of course, Russell Wilson, Colin Kaepernick goes to the Super Bowl. Remember, he wasn't even a starting quarterback at the beginning of last year. So there's a guy whose track record, while he did everything possible uh, when given the opportunity, still, he doesn't have that long-term track record. I think all of those quarterbacks will be a little overrated heading into uh, this season. But as far as some of the specifics, um, Von Miller, a lot of people, in fact, last night I was having a couple beers with a few people, including a former cohort who's now working for another website. And we were discussing the Denver Broncos, what type yeah. of year to expect from them. We know that Peyton Manning, in my humble opinion, probably the best regular season quarterback in the history of the game. But on defense, there are going to be some question marks. Von Miller, he's been suspended for the first six games. They had that really bizarre offseason thing where Elvis Dumerville, because of they didn't submit his contract in time, that he became a free agent. And an interesting statistic, the last two years when both of those guys were on the field, Miller and Dumerville, they um, sacked 8% of their opponent's dropbacks, but when they were both off of the field, only 3.4%. And with both of those guys on the field, and I've always said the single most important statistics in handicapping are yards per rush, yards per pass, and most importantly, yards per play. Well, they allowed 4.5 yards per play with both of those players on the field, 5.1 with both of them off of the field. Now, one of them's gone. The other one's going to be suspended for six games. So one of those early trends, the Denver Broncos, they certainly got a great quarterback. Their defense is questionable. They're going to have some high totals, but despite those high totals, they're probably going to be a big over team at the beginning of the year. Overs from Denver. Well, that segues perfectly into uh, the thing that I'm looking for. Let me get your, your feedback on this. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I remember, you know, last year and I think for a few years now, uh, early in the season, there's been a lot of overs. There's been a huge overtrender, mm -hmm. uh, the NFL has been. And uh, I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, the crackdowns on big hits on defense. And, you know, this year we're seeing the same thing. A lot of talk about concussions and all that. And so I'm thinking that maybe, you know, the uh, def defenders will be a little bit skittish and the uh, offense will be taking a lot more chances. I'm thinking we might see another big overtrend in the NFL in the first few weeks this year. What do you think about that reasoning? It's definitely a possibility. I'll have to look up these specific statistics as far as whether early in the season has been a huge over, but I think my gut reaction would be the fact that star quarterbacks, star rookie quarterbacks have been emerging the past several years. We saw, you know, Cam Newton a couple years ago, and it used to be where you'd never have a rookie quarterback would become a star instantly. Here in Atlanta, Matt Ryan a couple years ago, another example. So I think the fact that we're having guys come straight out of college and become star quarterbacks in the NFL 
would probably be another reason that uh, overs are happening early in the season, in addition to the rule changes as well. Yeah, I, th I think it's been the past two years where there have been uh, big mm -hmm. overtrends in the first two weeks. I'll have to look it up and uh, maybe I will uh, post it in the thread for this video. But I always assumed that that was uh, the big reason why. All right, is there, uh, are there any other uh, individual players that you're expecting, you know, maybe uh, better than average or, uh, or worse than expected performances from? Sure. Adrian Peterson is another guy, and he is really Minnesota's entire offense. Uh, Christian Ponder, a little shaky. I don't think Ponder's ever going to make that next step. Now, Peterson was without question established as one of the top running backs in the game, and he's really the poster child of how you can teach a running back to stop fumbling. Remember, he was a great running back from day one, but he fumbled the ball too much and now has great hands and is able to hold on to the ball. But he overcame that ACL surgery or, or whichever cruciate ligament surgery it was last year and had that miracle year. Now he's got to follow it up, though, and he's got, you know, he's took a pounding last year. Plus, most importantly, one of those uh, big news things that can sneak under the radar from a handicapping standpoint, his fullback, Jerome Felton, is going to miss the first three games because of substance abuse. Mm. A, a really compelling statistic, when he was on the field with Peterson, Adrian Peterson averaged 6.9 yards per rushing attempt, but with Felton off of the field, 4.6. That is a whopping 2.3 yards per carry difference with Felton off of the field and on the field. And, you know, we've seen over the years how important fullbacks are from a blocking standpoint. So I think Adrian Peterson, number one, it's, he's going to be overvalued following that great year. And number two, one of the most important suspensions or injuries is going to affect him directly. And I think it's going to affect him negatively. All right. That sounds great. So you're looking to uh, what fade, uh, uh, Minnesota in the first few yeah. weeks. Yes, exactly. Minnesota. And the interesting thing is they might have to force, they might have to pass the ball a lot more, which right. even though their offense won't be as good, they may have more overs because I've said a million times that handicapping totals isn't about offensive and defensive competence as much as it is pace. And Minnesota might have to throw the ball a lot more and pick up the pace. So their offense could be worse, but yet they could be higher scoring. For sure. All right. Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com. Thanks so much for all these great insights. And we are going to be doing uh, regular weekly previews of NFL games all season long with you. Thanks so much, Joe.